Okay, in this video we're going to do an example of the ambiguous case of the law of sines, and um, let's get started. So, uh, the ambiguous case is angle side side, so you have an angle, the side opposite the angle, and you have another side. So anytime I have this, if there's an acute angle, which I have in this example, um, I draw what I think of as the triangle, which looks nothing like a triangle, but it looks like it could be a triangle. And that's the idea, because um, this example represents just possibilities, like there might be zero triangles, there might be one triangle, there could be two triangles, we don't really know, but those are the only options. Um, so first thing I want to do is label this up. So I've got an angle, it's 24, opposite 24 has to go 22 because they're both M, like angle M side M. And then the other given side I always put on that adjacent right there, the 45, kind of looks like a hill. Um, so the first thing I do when I'm doing the ambiguous case is I check to see if the side opposite the angle is greater than the other side because if it is there's one triangle and I solve it and I'm done. But as you can see in this case 22 is less than 45 which means I need to go to the next thing. So the next thing is I calculate the height of this um, supposed triangle. So the height is always the same thing. Um, it's always going to be the sine of the angle times the other given side. So in this particular case it's going to be 45 times the sine of 24. Uh, use a calculator I got this to three decimal places which is how I give all my answers for these. Um, H is approximately 18.303. So if you look at it now, um, the height is smaller than the side opposite, which means uh, that we are going to get two triangles because we already know that the side opposite is less than the other given side. So basically we have this inequality. H is less than opposite, is less than other. That guarantees that we're going to have two triangle solutions. So what we do is we write down our two sets of information, we fill in what we know, and then we start solving. So we haven't actually solved anything yet. Um, other than the height, which is kind of useful. So I'm going to write down my three sets of givens, and I've labeled it um, the angle V sub 1 and P sub 1, and then side P sub 1, because those are going to be unique to this triangle, whereas M, M, and V are going to be the same in both. And then I have another possible triangle, so I'm going to put little sub 2s on those. Um, and now I'm going to fill in the givens for both of them, so 24 degrees, 22, 45, and then the same in the second triangle. Um, and let's solve. So there's really only one thing I can do, and uh, that's to find angle V sub 1. It's the only thing I could do. Um, so I'm going to do that by using the law of sines. So the law of sines says that sine of V1 over 45 is the same as the sine of 24 over 22. Um, and that ratio, sine of 24 over 22, or sometimes we'll flip it and do 22 over the sine of 24, that's going to get used a lot when we're doing this because it's really the only thing that we like concretely know. Um, so here I need to solve for V1, so V1 is the inverse sine, or the arc sine, of 45 sine of 24 over 22. Grab a calculator, punch it in, I get my answer to three decimal places, um, and I'm going to fill it in, in the information. And so that's V1 in triangle 1. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to immediately find the supplement of that angle, because that's going to be V2. So V2 is always going to be the supplement of V1. Or more generally, the first angle that you find, immediately find its supplement and put it in the second triangle. If you do that, you're going to get these right most of the time. So the supplement, V2, is 180 degrees minus V1. And so my calculator tells me it's 123.699 degrees. Let's put that in. Okay, so now what I do is I stop thinking of these as two triangles that are related to each other. So let me box that. I'm just going to solve this triangle. So to just solve this triangle, I need to find angle P1, and then once I know that, I'll find side P1. Um, so let's use the law of sines. So, uh, well, rather, let's use the fact that triangle angles add up to 180. So uh, angle P1 is 180 minus angle A minus V1, which is about 99.699 degrees. So 99.699 degrees goes in our information. Now we'll use the law of sines to find side P1. So I've already gone through and solved it for P1, um, but I started with P1 over sine of P1 equals 22 over sine of 24, and I cross-multiplied the sine of P1. Um, sine of P1, so P1 right now on my calculator is like my previous answer, so I'm just using the previous answer, and the calculator tells me that I get uh, 53.316. Fill that in. I'm totally done with that triangle. Now, look at the second set of information. Solve that triangle. So you solve them as if the other triangle doesn't even exist. You just kind of go through it. So um, angles add up to 180. So P2 is 180 minus A minus V2. Um, because uh, the triangle with V1 and P1, that doesn't even matter to us anymore. We don't care about it. 
So P2 is approximately 32.301, fill that in. And then we use the law of science to find P2, which uh, if you compare it to how we found P1 is like almost exactly the same thing. So I actually just copy that expression in my calculator and change the angle P1 into the angle P2 um, and have it spit out the answer. And it tells me that P2 is about 28.903. And there you go. So we solved uh, the ambiguous case that had two triangles. It's the most interesting case, has the most going on, um, and people usually have the most questions about it. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.